There's a story making its way around the internet about a posting from a young lady who says she has cracked the code to guaranteeing a job offer after an interview. She has one interview question that she always asks and she shares it with the audience. And she says, this is gonna guarantee that you'll get an offer. I'm going to share that question with you as well as another one some people swear by and my own experience landing almost every single job I've ever applied to and the reasons I believe I was so successful. Make sure you stick around until the end when I share the one tip that everyone can easily use to improve their own odds landing that coveted job. Now let's start off by addressing the elephant in the room. There is no question that can guarantee you a job offer. For starters, two people might ask the same question and if there's only one job, but there is a less obvious reason. Sometimes life intervenes in a way no one had anticipated. The company may announce a hiring freeze and hence the job can't be offered, or someone inside the company with pull wants their nephew hired. At one company I worked for, we received a directive from somebody on the board of directors to hire the son of a next door neighbor. Making this particularly galling was the fact that none of us wanted to hire him, but we did because we were told to. Luckily, his work was much better than his interviewing skill. Now, without further ado, let me tell you what that one question is, that foolproof question. The fool, foolproof question is, what would excellence in the role look like? Now, let me be clear, it's not a bad question, but I am not certain it would guarantee a job offer after a mediocre job interview. The person swearing by this question is 28 years old, so she doesn't have a vast of amount of experience in applying for jobs. I expect she's a really good interviewer, and this question is just part of her repertoire. She would have gotten the job even if she hadn't asked. But if you like it, add it to your arsenal of questions to ask at the end. If you're going to ask it, don't save it until the end. Why not? Because you want to integrate their answer into your responses to their questions. So let's say they say excellence in this position will include reducing duplicate payments. Then you might want to mention how you did that when you respond to questions where it would fit in appropriately, of course. If you wait until the end, it might never occur to you to mention duplicate payment. Now, I said that there was another question that many swear by, and I'm going to share that with this question many experts recommend asking at the end of the interview. Personally, I think this is better than the other one. And the question is this. Do you have concerns around my ability to perform this role? Now, if they answer, it can be a double-edged sword, but it does give you the opportunity to clear up any misunderstandings. But they also might say something like that you don't that you don't have a good answer for. Like if we were looking for someone who has experience with the master vendor file and you don't have that experience, you can say something like I'm a fast learner and I can get up to speed fast or I'll do some reading before I, I come. But that is not going to change their perception that you don't have that experience. Now I want to address the issue of why um, I think I've been so successful when applying for jobs. I've spent a good amount of time thinking about why I got so many of the jobs I applied for. In fact, there were only a few that I didn't get. And in each of those uh, cases, I sat down and figured out the reasons why I didn't get them. Why did I receive such a high percentage of offers? And I think it boils down to three things, two of which you might want to emulate, and the third one, well, that's a personal decision, and, and we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about it right off the bat. Um, in almost all cases, I was always completely qualified. Only once did I apply for something that I wasn't 100% qualified for, and I'm going to discuss that in a minute. You may or may not want to follow this particular tactic. You've probably heard the statistics that men apply for a job when they meet 60% of the qualifications, but women only apply if they meet 100% of them. Well, I definitely fall into that 100% after um, my, that experience, which I'm about to tell you about. And so while I have a high success rate, I also may have missed out on, on some good opportunities. Let me explain why and what happened with me. When applying for my second job out of college, one of the qualifications that they wanted was somebody who could program in Fortran 4. Now, I had taken one self-study course at the company I had been working for, and I didn't give it much thought. Let me put it this way. If you're going to fudge something on your resume or exaggerate a little bit, Fortran 4 is probably not the place to do it. Now, we were only expected to write some small programs and only do this occasionally, but it will probably come as no surprise to anyone listening this to learn that my first program absolutely refused to run. Luckily, we used an outside service, and in desperation, I called them up. The guy responsible for our account took pity on me, and he said, don't worry, go home. I'll look at it tonight. And miraculously, when I came in the next day, it worked. That scenario was repeated several times until we started using a canned program, and it didn't have to do that programming anymore. Those few hair-raising account days 
left me scarred for life and I vowed never ever again to exaggerate on my resume. But it seems to me now after all these years have gone by that somehow there could have been a happy medium between my experience um, and only applying for jobs that you're 100% qualified for. Again, this is a decision each person needs to make for themselves, but I would encourage you if you have 90 95% of the things that they're looking for that you, you go ahead and apply. Don't eliminate that job. Yeah, your success rate might be a little bit lower, but might, you might get it anyway. Okay, the second fact, I was always pleasant. You want to leave the interviewer, especially if it's the person who you're going to report directly to, with the feeling that you would be a nice addition to the staff, not only from a knowledge and skill standpoint, but also somebody who'd be pleasant or fun to have on the team. Now, I'm not saying go in and act like the class clown, but there's, there's a happy medium. In all but the most extreme situation, acting like the class clown will lose you the job immediately. But don't be so serious throughout the interview that they think, oh boy, she's gonna be a little laughs when she comes to work here. Try and relax a little. How? Here are some tips. One, smile when you go in and wear appropriate throughout the interview. Two, act like you're happy to be there, not like it's a fate worse than a root canal. Three, don't be obnoxious. I can share two examples with people who interviewed for me who I would never hire regardless of their qualifications. The first was a guy who showed me a picture of his baby as he was leaving the interview. Instead of having a good uh, last question, he was showing me a picture of his baby, telling me this is why he wanted to have the job so he could make more money to get more stuff for his kid. I felt uh, like he was trying to play on my heartstrings because I was a woman and I thought, oh no, 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 we're not hiring you. The second was a guy who told me that we would no longer need to have our tax department. Now, the company I was working for was the equivalent of a Fortune 25 company. It was a private company, it was an international company, um, and his job was an entry level, but it was only about two steps above that. In both cases, their parting shot had clinched the interview, but not in the way that they had thought. Uh, they left me with the impression that there was no way in you know what that I was ever gonna hire. That reaction, because in reality, they were both mediocre candidates, but their closings had convinced me they were absolutely wrong for the job. Okay, so three, don't be obnoxious. Four, stay, stay engaged throughout the whole interview. Ask a lot of questions, nod when they are talking to show that you're interested. If you can find a way, and be careful with this one, compliment the person without seeming smarmy or creepy when you do it, so be careful. It goes without saying, I hope I don't have to say this, but never comment on their appearance or their clothing. And then the third reason why I think I was, um, I, I always got an offer, or most of the time, not always. I was always prepared. So you want to do your homework ahead of time, make sure you know a little bit about the company and the position. In fact, if you set aside 15 minutes to prepare the night before the interview, you should be good to go. I think this is so important. We recently did a short talk on exactly what you should do in those 15 minutes to get ready for your all important interview. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.